decision for encapsulation. <laughs> Yes, okay, everybody listen carefully. What does encapsulation mean? It's when you take your code and you put it out the class. Yeah. Encapsulation. What do classes have? The two things that encapsulation means. Classes have fields and methods. Methods. Fields and methods. That's what that's what encapsulation means. It means that you take your software and you try and encapsulate parts of your software into classes. Classes have fields and methods. That's what encapsulation means, okay? Next thing that we learned last week was inheritance. Can anyone give you a definition for inheritance? From this side of the room. More star jumps? Or give me a definition. And what does that mean exactly when, when, when one class inherits from another class? What does, what does it mean? Uh, not quite it gets it an instance of it. Your it your extends from it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, it extends. What does that mean in practical terms? What does it mean about the code? You got it. It gets all of the fields and it gets all the methods from the thing that it extends. Right, if we're talking about inheritance, is that a has our relationship or an is our relationship? Okay, how many people think it's a has our relationship? How many people think it's an is our relationship? It's an is our relationship. When I say that um, a car extends vehicle, that means a car is a vehicle. It doesn't mean a car has a vehicle. Do you understand? If a car has a vehicle, how would I say that a car has a? How do you do a has our relationship? You've done um, some, some software engineering and you've probably drawn some diagrams. How do you know if one thing has a something as a relationship? How do you do that relationship? Yeah, how do you do it in code? How do I say, for example, that a car has a wheel? Yeah, and what do you do with the class? You just make it a... What, what is the relationship between car and wheel? No, a subclass is an is our relationship. Okay, A subclass is inheritance. <coughs> To say that a car has a wheel, all you do is you say that a car has one field which is of type wheel. Do you understand what fields are now? Fields are has our relationships. Inheritance is an is our relationship. Do you understand? Everybody understand? I'm sure you've done software engineering diagrams where you've done these types of things. You've done software engineering. Have you done UML? Have you done class diagrams? These class diagrams, you've done these big arrows. The big arrows means uh, inheritance. The arrows with a one to many, there has our relationships. And that means that one class has another class as a field. Okay? So these are quite important concepts, everybody. If you don't know them, and if my explanations and what we're doing in the class is not enough, you need to look these up. Because I absolutely guarantee you're going to get asked these questions, number one, in your software exam, in your programming exam. Number two, every interview you're going to do next year is going to ask you to draw these diagrams and to explain what these relationships mean. So they're absolutely critical to your progression through college from second year to third year, okay? So these are totally fundamental concepts. So the last part of that is, is what's called polymorphism. And in order to illustrate polymorphism, we'll do one example today, and if we have time, we'll, we'll continue our example with the Space Wars game, but maybe I'll get you guys to do some work on that in the lab. So the example we're going to do today is we're going to do an example where uh, we're going to change a dog into a cat and into a sheep. Does that sound exciting? This is like Harry Potter here, okay? We're going to do some magic today. And we're going to do this magic to illustrate the third principle of object-oriented programming, which is called polymorphism. And polymorphism just means many changes. So it's the ability for an object to change from one type to another type at runtime. That's what polymorphism means, okay? So... I'm going to draw the diagram and I'm going to show you what this little sketch looks like that we're going to write today. Here's the diagram, first of all. The diagram looks like this. We have a base class called Animal. And we're going to make three subclasses of Animal. <clears throat> one is a cat. Another one is the dog subclass. And the third subclass is the, um, the dog, the cat, and the sheep. Okay, so that's the, that's the architectural diagram of what we're going to create. Our sketch is going to keep track of... Let's put our sketch over here. And our sketch is called Dogs, Cats. That's going to have a hazard relationship. And it's going to keep track of multiple animals. And the animals can be either dogs, cats, or sheep. So that's a diagram of what we're going to, what we're going to make today. 
In terms of code, what it, or in terms of what it actually looks like when it's finished, it's not terribly fancy. It's just a silly little program to illustrate this principle. But what we'll have is we'll have an array list of animal types, and the animals can be either dogs, cats, or sheep. Okay, so it can be any of the three subclasses of animal, and then we'll be able to change them at runtime. So we'll be able to change them from dogs, cats to sheep, and then we'll be able to also be able to make them make noises. So that's what the that's what the cat makes, and of course this is what the dog makes. And that, of course, what's the name of that doggy? It's Misty. It's Misty. Yeah. <laughs> My beloved. So we'll be able to change them. <laughs> okay, you get the idea? <laughs> That's what we're going to make today. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I want you guys to do is I want you to take that project that I've given you and um, once you have it running, in other words, once it just shows up with a black screen like this, and in order to make it do that, you have to just import the uh, minimum library so that we can play some sounds and so that this code will work here. Let's go to a new tab and let's make a base class called Animal. All right? And in that base class, I want you to make one field, which is just is alive of type Boolean. So that needs to be a bool. Okay, that's a Boolean type. And in the constructor, I want you to set is alive to be true. Now, I want you to make two methods on that class as well. One method is called um, speak. And uh, for the moment, just print out something on the uh, console. Okay, just print out something on the console inside the speak method. And the other method is called display. And you don't have to put anything in for that. Just put open and close curly brackets. So this is our base class. And dogs, cats, and sheep are going to extend this base class. All right? And this base class is called animal. So number one, make your sketch run and make it show a blank screen. And once your sketch runs and shows a blank screen, then go and create the animal base class. OK, everybody? Okay, everybody, if you look up here, we're going to make the class animal. Um, see, a good few people have this, so, you know, let's, let's just crack on here and uh, get this going. So, there's class animal. I'm going to make a Boolean field called is alive. And um, a couple of interesting things here. You can do Boolean with a B, a lowercase b or an uppercase b, but they mean something slightly different. Boolean with an uppercase b is, is what's called an object wrapper. Same as integer or float, and it allows you to put booleans into an array list. It makes an object out of what's called a primitive type of boolean. So here's boolean is alive. The uh, animal class should we start with an upper or a lowercase character? The class. The class should be uppercase. Yeah. So the convention in Java is that class names start with an uppercase. So animal. There's my base class constructor, and then I just go is alive equals to true. Okay, and we're going to put two methods on here. We have a void um, display. And I said that display isn't going to do anything at all. So we'll just do void display with open and close curly brackets there again. The convention in Java um, is that you make your method names with a lowercase character. That's the Java convention. In C sharp, the convention is with an uppercase character. So there's void display and then void speak. What did you So the speak, let's just do print ln uh, I can't speak. Alrighty, so that's my base class. Okay, so that's the base class. Is that okay with everybody? So Let's do some subclasses, right? I'm going to start doing one of the subclasses because I want to put some code in here and explain to you how it works. Let's make a dog subclass first of all. The dog is okay. Yeah, let's do the dog first, okay? So, class dog. Now, I want to say that my dog is a type of animal. How do I do that? What's the key word I use? Extends. Extends, awesome. So, dog extends animal. So that means now that a dog can be has the alive flag. So dog has, has an alive flag that can be set to true or false. 
The dog now automatically gets the method speak and it gets the methods display. But what we're going to do is override those methods. The other thing we'll do is we'll override the constructor as well. So let's do that first of all. So the constructor for dog looks like this. And um, okay, yeah, actually there's a couple of extra fields we want to add to the dog, right? We want to try and be able to have, have it so that the base class animal is just like, if you like, a kind of a placeholder. It doesn't do anything useful by itself. Only the subclasses do useful things. So this dog and the cat and the sheep are all going to be able to do um, a few things. First of all, they're going to be able to draw themselves using that image. And they're also going to be able to play back a sound, which is the appropriate sound for the animal. So we need to make two fields in the dog here to store the image we want the dog to display and the sound we want the dog to be able to uh, play. So the type for the image is a P image. That's a processing image type, right? So let's just call this um, image. P image image. And it's called audio, audio player. Audio player audio. Now, just to make sure that they're the right types, I'm just going to hit the play button and make sure it compiles. Yeah, it does compile. Perfect. Okay, so the P image is the type for the image. The audio player is the type for the audio. In the constructor for dog, let's go and load the appropriate image and load the appropriate audio player. So to load the image, you use image equals load image. And you pass in the name of the image file that you want to load into that image object. And I'll just verify the file name. It's just called dog.jpg, right? So load image dog.jpg. And for the, for the audio player, it's audio equals, and you have to use the minimum object that we constructed in the sketch over here. So you see in the, in, the, in the setup method for the sketch, I construct this uh, minim object. This is how minim works. You construct it and you pass it in the sketch as a reference there. So for the dog class, we do load, uh, sorry, it's minim dot load audio. Maybe it's load file. And I'm just going to verify the API call. Uh, yeah, load file, that's what it is. So the dog's audio file is called bark.wav. Let me just double check it is a wav file. Yeah, bark.wav. So there's bark.wav. All right, so that's me loaded the image and the audio file into those two fields which are now part of the dog. So that means every dog has got an alive flag which it gets from its super class and then it also has an image and an audio. That we load up in the constructor. Yeah. Okay, why don't you put image and audio in the animal class? They all have. Sure. Um, that we could refactor it like that. There's, there's, there's because maybe I'm thinking here that I maybe want animals which don't necessarily have an image and an audio file. But you know, it's it's a perfectly it's a different design basically to put them into the base class. But I'm trying to make things as generic as possible to make it possible that some. Some animals maybe have some extra fields and some don't have extra fields. But yeah, you're right. Once I look at this and I see that I have cat, dog, and sheep, and they all have this, probably it makes more sense to put it into the base class. All right, yeah. Okay, so there's image and there's audio. Okay, so let's now override those two methods from the base class. Let's override, oh, sorry, let's put in some more things into the base class. I'm just thinking maybe what we should do in the base class is uh, put in a float for x and y. So the float x and y is where we're going to display the p image. So let me put that into the base class. And in the dog, okay, yeah, let's go void display. Uh, in the display method, we're going to display the p image at the position x and y that we're getting from the super class. So to draw an image, it's image as far as I remember. Yep. And this takes three parameters. I guess the first parameter is probably the image you want to display. And then the second parameter is the x and y coordinates. I think the x and y coordinates is the top left hand corner. But I'm not 100% sure. We'll try it. Ah, is it the top left hand corner? Cool. So that's the display method. And for the audio file, let's write 
avoid speak method. Uh, the audio file, uh, I need to just double check the code here. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is call audio.rewind. So audio.rewind just rewinds the, the, the audio file back to the beginning and then audio.play. Okay, cool. That's our dog class name, right? So what we've done here, you notice, is that the dog also has a display and a speak method. And the signatures for these are the same as the ones in the super class. So it's very important that, you know, that you get the case here correct and the method signature exactly the same as the base class. And so now we've overridden those two methods from the base class. And just to test to make sure everything is working, we should be able to, in our base class, go dog, dog, let's go dog Misty. Like that. In the setup method, we should be able to go Misty, uh, sorry, equals new dog. And then we should be able to go Misty dot speak. And then just as my sketch runs, hopefully we should just get one bark sound. There we go. So just get that much working. Take a couple of seconds to, or take a minute or two just to get up to that stage. And then we'll move on and we'll make the cat uh, subclass as well, okay? So if you want me to put any of the code up, just let me know. Can you put on autoplay? Sure. All right, so just put down your laptops for a second. I'll do cat and sheep just to make sure that we're, and we'll, we'll try and do it together. So cat, we said, was pretty much the same as dog. So let's go to the fields from dog. And, uh, sorry, what was your name who suggested we should probably put this into the base class? Simon? Yeah, it's probably a good idea maybe to think about putting this into the base class. Because all of these, all of the animals we're making have a P image and an audio file. So, you know, maybe we could refactor this and put these into the base class. For now, it's okay. Let's put them in here. So there's my P image and my audio file. My constructor for the cat's going to look like this. Cat. And then let's take the code from the dog. So we're going to initialize the audio and the image file. So the image this time, I guess, is called uh, cat.jpg. And let's double check to make sure the audio file is called meow, M-E-O-W dot wav. All right. There we go. And the same as the uh, display and the speak method. Let's take this code. These are pretty much the same. Again, you might think, hey, maybe I could put this into the base class because they're all the same. But what I'm trying to get to here is maybe I want these three animals all display themselves and speak. But if I wanted to have an animal which did something different, then I might not necessarily, I might necessarily want to put in all this into the base class. Anyway, there's a cat. <laughs> okay, so cat display and cat speak. <coughs> that should be covered from the base class. Not all X or Y. Okay, so that's a mistake. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah, go. Cool. There's cat. <laughs> Make sure it boils. Oh, you're right. Good man. Well spotted. Thank you. So that's class cat ajax. Class cat extends on. Okay. The one thing, everybody just be quiet for a sec, will you? The one thing we wanted to add to this was the number of lives. So let's go into lives. And in the cat constructor, let's go lives equals nine. And then we wanted to add one additional method called die on the cat. And the method die, let's go if lives is greater than zero, lives minus minus. If lives is equals to zero, I'd probably put this code in here, I guess. 
so I don't have to check it every frame. So if our every time, if lives is equals to zero, then is alive is equals to false. Cool. All right. I think that will work. There's various ways you could write that. You could write the if statements in a slightly different order, and it would just be fine, and it would work fine as well. But that works okay. Okay. So check to see if the lives is greater than zero. We subtract one from the lives, then check to see if it becomes zero. If it becomes zero, I'm going to set is alive to equals to false. Is that okay with everybody? So now let's do the goat, or the sheep, I should say. Well, you can do a goat too if you want. So now I have a new file called sheep. <coughs> Class sheep extends animal. Speed, uh, <laughs> speed. Ah? Speed. 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 Should probably rename that to be sheep. Oh, let's save the sketch then, okay? And then rename. So sheep we said was similar to cat and dog in that we have the image and the audio file. So let's take the image and the audio file, bring it over to here. Make our constructor for sheep. Similarly, we're going to load up the image and the audio file for the sheep. What's the audio file for the sheep called? B L E E T or B L E A T? Okay, so let's take our display and our speak methods from the sheep as well. Okay, there we go. There's void display, void speak. So let's just make sure everything runs. Okay, there's everything compiling and running. So I just want to double check how many people are up as far as this. Is that the majority of people? How many people are still working? I would like a minute or two just to catch up. Or will we press on? I don't mind. Um, I'll leave it for. Okay, we'll, we'll press on. We'll only do. We'll, we'll press on. Okay. This is the code. Um, <coughs> if you need to take it down or you need some help, we'll have another little pause in the five minutes or so and I'll uh, come around and help you. Okay, so there's the cat, the sheep, the dog. Now, here's the new thing that we're going to learn today. Okay, so hopefully you've had some practice of doing inheritance and encapsulation. Now it's time to do the polymorphism thing. So, let's imagine that I wanted to create instances of dogs, cats and sheep in my main sketch, right? I could just do them like this. I could go dog, Misty, cat. What's the name of a cat? Anyone got a cat? In the, in, 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 anyone in the room has a cat? Cat. Mr. Bigglesworth. That's going to take too long to touch. Mr. Cosworth. Simba. Simba. I like that more. So there's the cat, Simba, the dog, Misty, and the sheep. Dolly. Dolly, of course. Right, so we can keep keep track of our of our animals like this, right? Everybody, quiet for a sec. Yeah. Now, what we have to imagine here is that we want to keep track of multiple animals, right? I want to keep track of multiple animals. I want to keep track of things that are dogs, cats, or sheep. And so, how do we keep track of multiple things in the processing sketch? An array list, okay? Now, here's the interesting thing, right? Watch this. Okay, there's my array list of animals. Now, we know when we're setting up an array list, we have to pass the type in as a parameter here. What type should we pass in as a parameter? Animal. Animal, Animal. very good. So, my array list is of type um, animal. So over here where I've got Misty equals new dog and stuff. Animals equals new array list. Animal. Okay, we can get rid of the misty dots, uh, misty speak, and so on. Okay.
Okay, so now I've just gotten rid of my, I've gotten rid of any references to Misty and dogs and stuff, and now I just have an array list of type animal, and I've instantiated the array list in the setup method. Okay, we're going to write one new method here to populate this array list with random animals, which can be of type um, sheep or dog or uh, cat. So let's write a method here called setup animals. So first of all, what we're going to do here is we're going to generate a random number between 0 and uh, 2. So let's do that. Oh, in fact, we need to do a for loop. Let's do a for loop. For int i equals 0, semicolon i is less than 3. Because we need to add 3 animals. In actual fact, you can add as many animals as you like. Why don't we add 5 animals? Because we have plenty of room here, yeah? So, there's five animals, okay? Uh, or five, an array which, or uh, four loop which goes from zero to four. It's going to go through it five times. Now let's make a random number. How do I get a random number between um, zero and two? What are the parameters I'm going to pass in here? Zero and three. Three. Awesome. So 0 and 3 will give me a random number between 0 and 2. Because it never becomes exactly 3. Maximally 2.999. And when we truncate it, it becomes 2. So 0 and 3 will give me a random number there. Okay, let's write a switch statement now. Switch. Or, you remember how switch statements work? So there's now three possibilities, isn't there? It could be 0, 1, or 2. If it's 0, let's instantiate a dog. Ah, okay. One thing we need to do here is create our animal, first of all. Animal A. Alright, so I'll leave the code up there for a second so everyone can follow along. I'm going from i equals 0, i is less than 5. Generating a random number, and then I have, instant or I have declared a type animal called A. Obviously I haven't instantiated A yet, right? And then I'm switch or, so I'm going to check the value of or. And depending on whether it's 0, 1, or 2, I'm going to instantiate a dog, or a cat, or a sheep. So A equals new dog. And then break. Case 1. A equals new cat. Uh, case two. A equals new sheep. And then we'll break. Okay. Uh, the final thing we need to do here is we need to set the x and y coordinates, right? So let's go A dot x is going to be equals to i multiplied by 100. So i is the i is the index, right? So if i is 0, it's going to be 0. If i is 1, it will be 100. If i is 2, it will be uh, 200, and so on. So we're going to space these out at 100, um, 100 pixels. Give each one 100 pixels, right? Ah, OK, cool error. Let's fix that error as well. a dot y equals 100. So if you notice, we're getting an error here in processing here. Um, the program is not compiling, and it's saying the local variable A might not have been initialized. Right? So to get rid of that, we know we're going to initialize it, because we know that this random number always has to be 0, 1, or 2. So it will always do one of these things. It will always do one, or th one of those um, options. However, processing doesn't know that it's, it's going to do one of those options. So it's saying you're trying to assign something to the variable A, but you've never initialized it. So the way to get around that error is just to initialize it with the value of null. And then that will get rid of that error for you, right? So animal A equals null. So it initially starts at being null, points to nothing, generate my random number, <coughs> and instantiate A as being either a dog or a cat or a sheep. And uh, then I uh, assign them these values. Last thing I want to do is add it to the list of animals. Animals.add A. 
And sorry, one thing I should have done here at the very start, just after realizing, is to go animals dot clear. So animals dot clear, the first line there removes all the elements from the array list. And then I add up to I add five elements to the array list, and those five elements are going to get instantiated as either dogs or cats or sheep. Now, once everybody has got that code down, I'll just take a minute to explain what's happening, okay? Because it's a very important principle here, and that's the sort of principle of polymorphism. So I'll just leave that code up for a second, and people can take it down, and then I'll, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by polymorphism. as big as I can make it. Alrighty, I'll just leave it there for a second until everyone gets it gets it down. Okay, has everyone got this code working? Just put up your hands. It won't do anything yet because we have to now do the polymorphic um, virtual call to the display method and we should hopefully get five random animals displayed across the screen. But let's explain this code for a second and I'll just explain what's going on here and the most important principle that we're going to learn today is polymorphism. So first of all, um, the principle behind polymorphism <coughs> is that you keep track of the type of an object is from the base class, but the instance can be any of the subclasses. I'll repeat that, because that's, that's exactly what polymorphism means. The type can be the base class or the superclass. So in our case, our type is animal. But the instance, when you instantiate the object, it can be one of any of the subclasses of animal. Does everybody see that? So my array list of, is of type animal, but the instances that are held in the array list are actually subclasses of animal. You see that? Does everybody see what's happening here? So the first thing that happens is I clear out my array list and then instantiate five random animals and they can be either dogs, cats or sheep. This is polymorphism in action. So now you don't need to keep track of separate array lists of dogs, cats and sheep. You can keep track of one array list of type animal and each of the instances in that array list can be a subclass of animal. That's a very important concept. I need to make sure everybody's kind of understood it. Does everybody understand it or does anyone want to ask me a question about it? Silence. Huh? Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. Give me some feedback here. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Well, then I'll move on. But there's nothing more complicated to that's it. That's polymorphism, right? We keep track of instances of a base class and then we can instantiate them as, um, or the type is of the base class, the instances are of the subclass. Okay, in my draw method now, let's draw each of the animals. To draw each of the animals, you just go for, and we'll do this using it for each loop. Animal, A colon animals, A dot display. And if all goes well, we should have a sketch with five, oh, nothing. Oh, sorry, yes, of course. I have to call the setup animals method in setup now, right? Okay, so 100 is probably not enough. Maybe 5 is too many to get them to fit across the screen. Uh, let's make it I multiply by 200, and instead of making 5 of them, let's make 3. I think that's enough to make them fit across the screen. Yeah, 200 is even too small. Let's make it slightly bigger. Let's make it 250 maybe. Okay, 250 is kind of okay. So now I run it and we'll see that when that method gets called, you know, I now have my array list and it's just iterating through the array list and calling the display method. 
the display method gets routed to the appropriate method on the appropriate object. Because display is on the base class, but the display on the base class never gets called. What happens is, if the instance is of type sheep, it's going to call sheep display. If the instance is of type dog, it will call dog display. And if the instance is of type uh, cat, it will call cat display. Does everybody see that? But that's polymorphism. That's how polymorphism works. And it enables you to take a lot of code where you have lots of different instances of things and shrink the code down by keeping track of instances of the superclass or the base class. Okay, so that's that code. There's one last method that we need to write, and that's the key pressed method here, okay? So if you look at the start of the key pressed method here, I go int k equals key minus zero. Can anybody have a guess at what that's doing, what that code is doing? Have a guess. Key, uh, no, what, what will it do? What will it do? Whenever you press key, the sound will play. Slash. That's that's what we want it to happen. Yeah. But how do we? I mean, just looking at that line of code, what is it, what is it doing? Int k equals key minus the character zero. It's putting a number into k because to getting the ASCII value of character zero. Awesome. Two gold stars, right? That's great. Yeah, so key is the ASCII code, or in fact it's not ASCII because this is Java, it's Unicode, right? So it's the Unicode value for the key that's pressed. The Unicode value for the, the, the number keys um, do not correspond to the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you look up the table, you'll see that 0 is actually, well, I don't know what 0 is, but we can look it up, you know? Um, but that will basically return into K. If you press 0, you'll get the number 0 in K. If you press 1, you'll get the number 1 in K. If you press 2, you'll get the number 2 in K. Does everybody kind of know what's going on here? Okay, so what we need to do for this key press method is check, first of all, to make sure the key is in range. In other words, if the key is less than the number of elements in the array. Okay? If the key is less than the number of elements in the array, I want you to get the animal out of the array at position K and call the speak method on it. All right. Okay, do that. That's your last uh, your last job on this sketch. So check to make sure k is in range. And if k is in range, get the element out of the array list at position k and call the speak method. Okay, everybody. Here's the last thing. Right. So remember what's happening here. When I do k equals key minus the this is the this this here will give me the ASCII value for zero, right? This is going to be the ASCII value, or in fact, it's the Unicode value. It's a bigger table. It's the Unicode table, but it's the same principle. This is the Unicode table, and this is give me the Unicode value for whichever key is pressed. And if I subtract zero from it, the Unicode value for one is one greater than the Unicode value for zero. So if I subtract zero from any Unicode value, um, which is between zero and nine, I'll get the number. And that's what I'm looking for. I want to get k to be the number 1, or the number 2, or the number 3, and so on. So the first thing I do is I check to see if k is greater than or equal to 0, and k is less than. So it shouldn't be 3, of course. It should be uh, animals. animals.size. Right? So that means that k is, is within the bounds of the array. You can go animals.get at position k dot speak. So that's going to get the array element at position k and then call the speak method on it. So what should happen now is if I press 0, whichever animal is stored at position 0, its speak method should get called. Now I'm not hearing anything here. There we go. So yeah, so that 0 is pressed. If I press 1, it's called the sheep one. And if you press 2, you'll get the, um, the cat. Another thing we could do here is put if a key is equals to the space key, <laughs> then we could call the open bottle here. We could call set up animals again. Set up animals, yeah? So I call set up animals with the space key. So that jug uh, jug juggles around the array. So what you're seeing happening here is array element 0 is changing its type. 
the type was originally a dog and then it changes its type to be a cat. And this is legitimate and it's okay to do this because they are all subclasses of the superclass animal. Does everybody see now how polymorphism works? So what's happening here is we keep an array list of the base type or the superclass. The instances can be any of the subclasses. What's happening here, you can see, is what I call the speak method. Processing or the Java framework has to look up the type of the object and figure out which is the right speak method to call for the object type. And this is polymorphism in action. So now if you have lots of, lots of um, instances of classes, so long as you keep track of them as the base class, you can keep track of them all in one array list. Now, there's a couple of little lessons and a couple of little sort of gotchas that I wanted to explain before we finish up. But just to be clear, does everybody understand what's happening here? Does everyone understand the principle here, yeah? Of polymorphism. Right, let's try one little thing here, okay? I'm just probably going to do this in the setup method, right? Some things that you can do. It's still okay to do this, right? Look careful, you can still do this. Cat C equals new cat. Or cat com equals new cat. And then, of course, everybody look up, this is quite important, right? You can also then, because Tom is of type cat, what did we add to the cat that we didn't add to the dog? You can call tom.die, okay? And you can kill the cat. You can't call, obviously, dog.die because that method doesn't exist on the dog, right? This is okay. On the other hand, Give me another name for a cat. Bob. Bob. Okay, so look, you can also write this code here, animal Bob equals new cat. Again, this is okay, because this is saying the type of Bob is animal, but its instance is cat. And this is okay because cat is a subclass of animal. Isn't this okay? Everybody see that this is okay? Yeah. Happy? Yeah. This is not okay. We can't do this. It will tell you that the function die does not exist. The reason why it doesn't exist is because it doesn't exist on the type animal. Even though the instance is of type cat, because the type is of type um, uh, animal, Processing or the Java framework doesn't know that it's that there is a die method on the instance. It knows that there's no die method on the type. So it says, hey, you can't do this. There may not be a die method on the instance. You know, because animal could be a dog or a cat or a sheep. And you know, this code here could be part of an if statement. You can't do this. Does everybody see this? Very, very important principle here. And I want to make sure that everybody understands this before we move on. This is not okay. It won't compile, in fact, right? Some other things. If you want to check the type of an object, you can do that in Java. You can say something like this. If Bob instance of, an instance of is an operator, like plus or minus, right? It returns true or false. So you can go if Bob instance of cat. So now I'm checking that runtime to see if Bob is a, a cat. And if Bob is an instance of a cat, then you can do something like this. And this is okay, all right? Because what we've done here is actually explicitly said Check to see if Bob was an instance of a cat, which it may or may not be, because of course Bob could be a cat or a dog or a sheep. If it is explicitly checked, you know, we explicitly check using instance of, then what's this here? What do we call this? When I put the type in brackets like this, we call it a cast. Yeah, this is okay. And this is fine because we can cast from Bob to of type cat because Bob is a type cat, right? And then you can call b.die because the type of B is um, a cat uh, rather than an animal. It's okay to do this code. That's the last little bit of uh, polymorphism. It's kind of just an important principle. Um, anything else? Yeah, 
something that may occasionally happen, you could do something like this. Uh, let's do one last thing. Let's do animal. Okay, so Tara is of type <coughs> cat. Uh, let's say Tara is of type dog. <coughs> Another name for a cat. Does anybody have a cat in the room? <laughs> Now, looking at that code, does that look okay? How many people think that code is okay? How many people think the code is not okay? Yeah, processing things is okay, that's fine, it will compile. But when it ruins, will that work or not? It won't work, of course not. No, because you can't convert from... If it's type is a, a dog, you can't... You can't cast it to be a cat. No, you can't convert it to be a cat. The only way you could do that would be actually create a new instance. You could do something like this. This is okay. I'll just put this. This will give a compile error. Or a runtime error. <coughs> work or not? Tara equals you cat. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yes, this will work. This cat is of type, uh, sorry, Tara is of type animal, so you can instantiate it as a dog or a cat. This last line here is the same as just adding new things to your regular experience. So this will work okay. Huh? Okay, so I'll put a couple of notes up. Um, I'll just put some notes into this code and I'll upload it and I guess we'll probably leave it at that for today, okay? That's polymorphism. <laughs>